So, welcome back to the How To series, the photography guide, videography guide, images guide, how to take better pictures. Uh, we've already looked at aperture, we've looked at shutter speed, we've looked at how the two relate and use of ISO and filters and those sorts of things, and we've looked at composition. And now it's a chance to actually bring everything together. It's how to actually take better pictures. Next video that we're going to look at is how to actually start editing your pictures and make them look even better once you've taken them. But the key is to take a great picture in the first place. Editing cannot ever replace taking a good picture in the first place. Yeah, that makes sense. So we need to use all of the rules that we've learned. So the first thing is to actually look at the subject. Look at what you're taking a picture of. Are you taking a picture of a landscape? Are you taking a picture of a person? Are you taking a picture of an object, a flower, food, butterfly, whatever it is? and look at it and work out how you want to represent it. So think about whether you want the whole shot, whether you want the whole product, whether you want the whole person, whether you want the whole landscape in your picture, or whether you just want part of it. So think about your composition, think about your rule of thirds, all of those sorts of things. But almost before you start thinking about the composition, make sure that you've got the right angle, make sure that you've got the right background. Move around the subject, so really actually find that picture. With landscapes, if you've got one object here and one object there, if you move just slightly, you can really change. So actually just moving left or right just slightly can actually change how the layout looks in a photograph. And it's the same with flowers, it's the same with uh, portraits. You want to make sure that the background, every element of your picture works together. So move around, move left, right, up, down until you find a composition that works really well. Use your rule of thirds, use your symmetry, use your leading lines. S curves work brilliantly well, S lines into a, a picture, so particularly for landscape. If you've got a nice, beautiful leading line that's got a beautiful curve to it, it will help draw your eye in even better. So once you've found your composition, then think about how you want to actually represent the picture. Do you want it to be, do you want the depth of field deep or do you want it shallow? So start thinking about how much of the picture you actually want in focus is it a landscape do you want it all in focus do you want a little bit in focus are you shooting through an object that you need to blur so that you make sure that's out of focus and everything else is in focus if it's a person do you want just the eye plane in focus or do you want to actually get a little bit deeper or do you want the background in focus as well if it's something that connects that person to the portrait once you've thought about that, then start thinking about the shutter speed. Is the shutter speed that you're getting, if you're just, if you picked your depth of field and you picked your aperture and the shutter speed is fine for what you want, keep it that way. That's absolutely fine. That's, like I said, I work on aperture priority mode most of the time. And so, so long as I've picked my aperture and, and the shutter speed works for what I want to take a picture of, that's fine. Everything else will come into place nicely. But look at it, is it fast enough? If you're taking a picture of a fast moving subject, do you need to think about using a higher shutter speed, therefore increasing your ISO, or do you need a slower shutter speed? If you've got a landscape and you're taking pictures of water, then do you want to slow your shutter speed down so that you can get that beautiful flowing water? How much flow do you want in the water? It's amazing how much difference there is between a half a second, a thirtieth of a second, or five seconds. It will create significantly different blur in that water. So think about all these elements, and once you've got it, take the picture. It's really simple. Once you actually thought about the image, and this is where slowing down. Uh, Thomas Heaton is another YouTuber. I really recommend going to have a look at his stuff. He has a real philosophy of you go out and you take one picture in the day. Now I'm not quite that minimal. I have to say that I take lots of pictures during my day, but the idea of just going out for one image and really concentrating on getting that one great image in your adventure, in your walk, in your project, in your shoot, that's a really good idea because it means that you're going to focus on that one image. If you happen to get other images as well, fantastic, but really think about the one image. Because if you want to take great photographs, they do require a bit of thought. If you just take 600 photographs in a day, one of them might, might be great. Mostly, often sometimes by a little bit of luck, if you're not thinking about composition, if you're not thinking about aperture, if you're not thinking about shutter speed. So that's the basic process. It's just thinking about it. And the more you think about it and the more you do it, the more pictures you take, the longer you've been taking photographs, the more naturally it will come just thinking about it without even having to think about it, if you see what I mean. I've been taking pictures for 20 years now and I've got 70,000 pictures on my 
computer at the moment, plus everything I've taken on film, everything I've deleted. That's a lot of pictures to take and it, it really does start to become quicker and more natural. You don't have to stop and think about every shot that you're taking as you get further and further and further into it because essentially that thought process is happening already. The most important thing is go and play with it, enjoy it. Don't take it all too seriously. Sometimes try and break the rules. See what you can do to actually come up with new ideas because that's where things progress. If people come up with new ideas, they, those will be looked at by other people and it will be taken up and you might start a new trend. So go out and play. This afternoon we're looking, uh, we're doing a video on how to critique your photos, so actually looking at your photographs and seeing whether they are great, whether there's anything you could do to improve them, those sorts of things. And then we're also going to be looking at editing the photographs so that you can start to improve on the pictures you've already taken. So remember to subscribe uh, to the channel to be able to keep up to date with everything that's going to be happening over the next week or so. So remember to like if it's been useful because that would actually be really helpful to grow the channel and if there's anything else that you need to know, please comment in the section below.